Welcome back everyone to the live coverage of the Predator Canada Open here at the Cambridge Red Deer Hotel in Alberta. This is our final match of today and our next match is from the loser side to qualify for the last 16 this w WPBA event. It will be Don Hopkins from New Jersey against Kyoko Sone from Japan. Very interesting match and I would like to welcome in the commentary booth with me Brittany Bryant. Hi, thank you for having me. The local Canadian here. Absolutely, I'm so glad this event's here. Finally a, an event a little close to your house, I guess. Absolutely, <laughs> four, hour, four hour flight, so. Not too bad. Not bad at all. All right, cool, nice to have you here. So how is the tournament going so far? For me, it's going great. Um, I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with each game I've played, but um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to my next match and just improving throughout the tournament, so. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. So what can you tell me about Dawn Hopkins? Oh, well, she's been around for quite some time. Um, very seasoned player on the WPBA, so um, I think we're both we're gonna have a great match. Kyoko and her probably haven't played in a while, but this match means a lot throughout this tournament. It's win or go home. So um, this qualifies them for the top 16 single elimination. Um, I think they're gonna play their best and their, or at least their hearts out for sure. Okay, let's check it out. We've seen Don have a shot at the one, and unfortunately for Sone, she got snookered on it afterwards. She's going to have to go one round, possibly two. Yeah, I do like two if possible, mm -hmm. just to get that cue ball out of that spot in case she doesn't make the one. Absolutely. Called the extension, We're playing with a 30 second shot clock with one expansion extension per player every game, of course. We're playing, of course, 10 ball, call shot 10 ball, two races to four. And when both players win a set, we're having a shootout as a decider, the nail biter of the week. Absolutely. What do you think about the shootout? Um, as a spectator, I love it. The atmosphere is amazing. And also as a player, to be honest, um, to have people surrounding the table and just being under that pressure, um, I think it's gonna benefit all of our games in the long run. So it's exciting. Yeah, and probably a little heartbreaking at times. Absolutely, for <laughs> yeah. sure. Yeah, I've been there. Mm -hmm. but Me it's too, uh, I've been on that end. <laughs> but I do think it's a good improvement. So, mm -hmm. Whatever b draws people to the game, um, especially outsiders that don't play the game very often, is a benefit to all of us. Yeah, for sure. So Dawn at the table here, having a pretty good layout, actually, from here. I uh, just did commentary, like, Two matches ago with Don, very interesting. Mm. The, well, I didn't know her at first hand, but we actually did agree on a lot of stuff, like angles wise, and also kicking a little stuff and safeties. Like, oh, I like to be the ball of the rail, and like little details. I really, yeah, she really impressed me by the knowledge she had because I've never seen her before. So that, yeah, now I'm curious how well she executes with the knowledge she has. So. Yeah, she got a little short on this four ball. Can still try to make it and run into the eight. Always has the five. Mm -hmm. Can also decide to draw the cue ball. Draw with Let's put outsides on that. And that's no good. She's hampered by the nine ball now. And faced with a tough shot. The I only positive thing you can think about in this um, this circumstance is just potting the ball and having a natural angle to come down on the short side on the six, I feel. Yeah, if you play this pocket speed, good speed too, and needs a little... That's a great shot there, great recovery. The kiss to have it straight in the corner is definitely deserved after that shot. Yeah. And from here, it's back to business. Has to make sure she gets a nice angle though on this seven. She doesn't want to do a lot more work. Maybe stun over. Just half a diamond. And then I think she got pretty straight on this seven. So it's either follow and play a combination on the 
on the nine ball mm -hmm. with the eight, but I don't like it. So I might draw the cue ball to the short rail and back out. And back out, yeah. But yeah, I've seen th this table play and it's not always the easiest table <laughs> to do all this. <laughs> Keep it simple, I would say. I think that's all what we're trying to do out there right now, just as far as the speed, if you haven't played on the table as well. Just try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, and I think she played to just go for the combination. She didn't really think about drawing the cue ball. Mm -hmm. She looks like a player that yeah, doesn't really do big strokes. Really solid, just keeps it short and simple. Yeah. And not really big swings and big draw shots and everything. That's but this can be though. very effective. Great combination shot on the mm -hmm. nine ball. Pretty good start until now. Don Hopkins. Her first WPBA event in 1984, the US Open. That's a long time ago for me. <laughs> and also for you, but I Thank wasn't. Thank you, Tim. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, well, also just. Me <laughs> <as> well. <laughs> well, I mean, it's like I wasn't even born plus 12. That's. <laughs> Quite a long time. She takes first game here. And actually a pretty good start. She impressed me, a couple good shots. And mm -hmm. it's always tough to get that first game on the board sometimes. Yeah. Well, for me, it's always tough. Like I feel like I kind of struggle a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then when I finally get it, I get going more. Yeah. That's how I feel. I mean, this differs for a lot of players, of course. Well, it's just the excitement leading up to it, especially uh, the TV table. Um, the faster you can get comfortable is obviously the best. So the excitement, the adrenaline, um, this is a really important match again to qualify into the top 16. So um, she'll be happy with grabbing the first, the first game. Yeah, referee John Lehman here from New York, wrecking the balls with the Predator Aero Rack for Don Hopkins to break. Breaking from the side, she listened to my commentary. Glad to see this. She hit it pretty firm, just a little bit too soft, or not enough stroke on this. But you can see she had two chances to make a ball. Got really close to that side, a little unfortunate in my opinion. But it would have laid perfect as well if the one went in. But in the end, Especially with that three coming there. <laughs> she can't complain about the outcome. And Sone calling the push out here. Do you like to tie your balls on a push out or do you usually just try to leave a tough shot on the next ball? I typically try to leave a tough shot. Um, I don't necessarily, I don't disagree with tying up a ball. It definitely depends on the layout. Um, if you have to go up and down, or if the layout's fairly easy, I don't mind tying up a ball, but um, I, don't, I don't mind this push out, to be honest. She yeah, has to I'm be just creative. I'm just always scared in case my opponent makes a great shot. Now the table is wide open. Mm -hmm. I always think this, like let's say she calls the four, plays safe, and oh, she makes a four and gets shape. Right. Like it does happen at times. Mm -hmm. She underhit this a little bit. Yeah. The cue ball barely got to the rail, but just good enough. And yeah, this is a little tester here. Mm -hmm. Would you go for the combination? I like being, uh, personally, I like being aggressive here and playing it down in the corner and bringing out the cue ball to the other side for the two. Yeah, I like that too. Also, because I think she can play with quite some pocket speed. She doesn't really have to force it that much, which makes it easier to make the one. And the side pockets don't really play that easy, in my opinion, on these tables. So, no. especially a combination like this might be quite risky. I just think it's easier also just you have such a wider margin playing it up in the corner. Being on the rail like that, there's a lot of error that can happen. But there's a big reward to the combination. She went for the corner and... She did get fortunate. I think it's going to glance that. Yeah, she left some distance, and even though Kyoko can see the one ball, it's not really like she can do much. Mm. She might be able to bank the one ball over in between the two and the three, and getting the cue ball 
maybe two rails behind the five. Some more passive safety. I definitely like that shot. I think that she's going to go for that. Ooh, she went aggressive. Yeah, I didn't really see a lot of future on the two ball by going aggressive. Here we see it again. Real tough to get on that two ball. Apologized, of course, because she got pretty fortunate to go for a shot which had didn't have a lot of future mm. and then ending up like this. But I think Dawn has a good good shot here if she can kick the ball on the right side of the one, mm -hmm. sending the one ball towards the 7-10. Exactly. I am curious if she mm. called anything there or she was just trying to make distance. I'm not sure. I didn't really see her call anything. But we can see Sone Kyoko at the table. Here we see the replay. It hits the six or the seven. There was a lot of stuff that could have gone well, mm -hmm. but found the gaps a couple times. And now this, this seems to be an open layout for, for Kyoko. Oh. And we have seen this quite some times already. Mm -hmm. Usually they don't really under hit the ball on this table. It's most of the time they, yeah, it runs a little bit faster, probably with the heat of the lights. Does happen. So, looks like she's got a pretty nice technique actually. Good hit, and mm. if the two ends up on the rail, she doesn't really leave much doesn't leave a pocket which is nice so also interesting about Don Hopkins she's been a ESPN commentator over 15 years That's I was actually gonna mention that when you said that you were commentating with her recently she's had a lot of experience doing this as well yeah and it was like I really enjoyed it too like mm -hmm. we had a pretty good time and well, Mark first said, like, hey, go do commentary with her. I said, well, but I don't know her. And, I mean, does she play well? And, like, does she know a lot? Or, mm -hmm. And then afterwards I found out she did this. <laughs> and <laughs> she used to help with the Super Barrier Expo and a bunch of stuff. So, like, she's been doing she's a lot in the pool world. Absolutely. She's been very well known in the United States for quite some time. So I think her commentating experience... Um, also has helped her game for a number of years as well so yeah you can learn a lot by doing commentary too also interesting this Kyoko Sone finished third in the world championships in 2000 so she goes way back too mm -hmm. but has shown the world that she can play obviously Whenever I've seen Kyoko come over here or in any an international event, she's always placed very well. So I always expect her to um, compete at a high level and just place in the, in the top, to be honest. So well, let's see. Dawn played a, a okay safe, but left a fairly easy jump within the side. Yeah, I had to control the two ball a little bit better, and this is a fantastic shot there. Mm -hmm. Great shot. Lost the cue ball a little bit too much, but then still she made it and can continue at least on the three. Mm -hmm. It's what counts as well. It's not just not just always playing shape because then you're gonna miss the shot mm -hmm. more often. Let's see if she has a big stroke or if she has a different plan. She can shoot this in a down right and stun over just one rail and come back to the right side of the four. I like that. Mm -hmm. At some point it's also go time. Cannot always <laughs> hide. I, I, I like going for this and like letting her stroke out. I know she didn't get rewarded last time getting in behind the three, but... Look at the cue ball. She got really nicely on the four ball. But with this speed, you gotta be very accurate on mm -hmm. these tables. And a good chance here for Don. That's one thing you'll notice about a lot of players, I feel, is that they're gonna be playing a lot more one rail, simple, not as much spin as they typically will. 
just to avoid um, error. Ooh. Ran to the eight, and I think this is mm. no good. She might still be able to see that four ball, but I'm not sure if she can cut this four in. If she can't see it, do you just play the two two rail down and leave the cue ball on the top rail? I'm not too sure. I might bank this like towards the ten. Mm -hmm. like, like this. Oh, just a but I would hard. I would really try to bump the ten softly, like this kind of speed. Mm -hmm. Just because if you don't hit the 10, then it still ends up closely to the rail. Absolutely, yeah. But then still, like, she left a lot of distance. And as long as the cue ball is good on the rail, yeah. it's so tough to get back on that five ball. So well, she's jacking up here. This is extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. Well wow. executed. Great shot. <laughs> That's an amazing angle. shot. This is going to set her up nicely to finish off this. The only trouble ball is the eight. Well, this is for sure one of the better shots I've seen today. Mm -hmm. Very controlled and played a perfect shape on the five ball as well. And now she needs to hit that little gear because I feel like she's been struggling a little bit at the beginning of the match. Mm -hmm. Also, it would be nice for her to get that game on the board. Still, based on the current WPBA ranking, this should be a really close match as Don Hopkins is ranked 14 mm -hmm. and Kyoko Sone is ranked 18. Mm -hmm. So based on the ranking, you could say we might have a possible shootout here. There we go. But See? that's uh, maybe a little early, but it would be nice to finish the day. It'll be nice to be on this side of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I feel about it as well. <laughs> So I'm a little surprised by this choice. He could have played to the other side of the eight and played the 8-10 combination. Of course, I think, yeah, well, I'm pretty sure this eight ball still goes. But yeah, it's tough. You're running into a different, like another ball. Mm -hmm. You might run out of position and then it might get real difficult here. No, she's just gonna nudge the 10 or she's gonna try to come off the 10 and the rail. Just Ooh, nudge it. real soft. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she might have the wrong angle on this nine. Especially hitting it that soft, just pushing it to the back rail. You never know what can happen. I think I would have stunned it at least to make sure the ball comes off the rail and then have the nine in the other corner pocket. Would have been nice. Not sure what is nice here. If she has enough angle, she can maybe go to the short side of the ten ball. And if she's pretty straight, she can maybe draw into the ten. Short side. Good shot, she hit that really well. Pretty tough. Of course, the scratch was close as well, so she judged that pretty good. And this stem ball to shake the nerves off a little bit. To I'll level make the it score. One, one. Well done. Yeah, a couple big shots, exactly. Especially on that four ball, mm -hmm. which was a yeah a game winner. Set her up perfectly. I'm glad she got out there. It will gain a little bit more confidence throughout the set. Like you said, she kind of struggled in the first game, especially with the speed. So, so a little a view of the venue here. We're also having the Western Canadian Championships played on 35. Predator Apex bar tables, seven foot. That's another thing I'm impressed with, that we got our first event with the Apex um, Predator tables over on the bar table here up in Canada. And I'm so glad to experience it at first because I now I get to play a little bit too. It's nice to feel the tables a little bit, but mm -hmm. also the amateurs sound pretty happy about the tables too. Mm -hmm. And of course, everybody knows there has been some struggles, some issues with the tables, but now nobody has been really complaining this week. So mm -hmm. that's a good thing. In Germany, everything was fine. Perfect here, in Germany, absolutely perfect. And now here, everything has been playing good. So and I'm pretty sure Predator is pretty happy to have this event here. Oh, for sure. 
And as well, I know is if there is any problems, they're right on it and they're trying to adapt as quick as possible and get feedback from all players. So that's correct. And Kyoko mm -hmm. broke from the center of the table. Still surprised. I've seen so many people just keeping hold, like just keep trying from that center of the table, even though. <laughs> they won't You're going to make wall. me laugh over well, here, because Tim, because I was doing yeah, it Yeah, I know, also. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm really, really trying, but we definitely yeah, well have discussed switching it over. Um, as you've mentioned, you've um, obviously been back here watching, and probably at this point in time, it's the right thing to break from the side um, if you feel comfortable with it. Yeah, of course, that's always a thing. Um, but I have a feeling that, like, the only player until now that's successful from the center mm -hmm. has been Kelly Fisher, mm -hmm. because she has that li like the big pop had, on the yeah. break, and yeah, most of the women just don't break like this. Mm -hmm. So, and this is something you have to adapt to. But it doesn't matter. She was back on the table and not too sharp. Of course, this is the last match of the day, and both players have been well. One has been doing little commentary, the other one has been playing a couple matches too. They both have been playing. So they both get tired as well. They're human. It's normal. You can only drink so much coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a little two-way. Banked the one ball and mm -hmm. made sure that if she missed it, it would have been on the short side, of course. But I foresee her being in trouble. Dawn mm. putting the one with the five and the cue behind the seven ten. Oh. Just hit a little bit too thick. She tried to play the other way around, which was also possible. And a little messy table too. Mm -hmm. A really easy start. Here we see a replay. She tried to put the one behind the ten and then the cue behind the five which was a really small room, <laughs> small space up there. So I think I like what she's trying to do here. She's not trying to make this, she's just trying to play the one mm -hmm. and get the cue ball behind the five. And Well, regardless if she didn't get behind the five, she's still good, I think. I think she's still good. Mm -hmm. Of course, it would have been nice to lock it up exactly there, mm -hmm. but this was, of course, a nice shot because even though she wasn't even close, it was still going to be safe. Mm -hmm. so She's going one she rail here. She is going to call it in the corner. If she does pocket I it, might, then I might it like might come out. I might like to go three rails. Three rails and come behind from the back. It? Yeah. Just because if you can get the one ball up to all the other balls, there's more chance to get lucky. True enough. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The only good thing that could happen here is that she could maybe make the one, so... Mm -hmm. So, ball in hand for Don Hopkins. Also a runner-up in the WPBA Nationals and the ESPN Ultimate Nine Ball Challenge. Has shown in the past years that she belongs in this stage. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. she's kept that ranking for quite some time and to be able to do that with the level of play that has come and gone and um, just be that consistent, she certainly has earned her um, seating. Good control here over the cue ball. Maybe a little bit too far, but I think she can still make it in the top left corner and leave it on the right side of the four. Mm. Just a soft stun shot. Maybe get her right spin. Oh, she mm. draw the cue ball. She drew the cue ball just mm -hmm. a little bit, and I do like the. Um, although she did come off um, high off that rail. I like making sure that you have an angle on the four. Yeah, yeah. If you were straight on the four, then it's going to cause issues for multiple balls after. So she might be able to play 
a similar save like she did before. Banking the four ball over to the left side of the table and getting the cue ball behind the nine, eight, six. It might be something that is possible. Let's see what she does. Or is she trying to cut this and going up and down using three rails? No. no. Well, she was using the 10 and the seven. I think this worked out pretty good. That's a nice shot. Very good shot. Now she's just forcing her to play a two rail. I don't believe she can spin the cue ball enough to just to play the one rail. No, I think there's a good reward on this two railer as well. You can hit the left side. You might get the cue ball behind the five in this same area. And do you call something just in case here? Call the corner. If you do go towards the corner, then the cue ball is going towards the five. Then you have an option of playing safe. Yep, I like that. And she played a good shot. Good be safety from Kyoko I Sone. Is, I think this is also a preference. Do you play the long safe or do you play the short? Try to get in behind the one nine ball. Either way, you're going to be possibly doing that. Well, it also depends. Is it easy to hit if you play the short safe? Or is it going to be a lot of different balls and tough to hit? I think this one's always pretty easy to get contact with. And the more opportunities people get to get lucky, then it will happen once in a while. <laughs> Definitely. Pretty curious to see what she's doing. I think she called... She called it in the corner pocket where the five is at. Maybe she's playing the two railer. Okay. In between the ten and the seven and just stopping the cue ball there. Oh. And she will not like this. Yeah, she'll be staying right at the table. Yeah. Don will be giving this back. It'll be an option. Yeah, Don just checking if Kyoko called this shot. Little confusion. But I do agree, I wouldn't shoot from here. Even though jumping is quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> try not to do it too often. She's just going to try to go one rail at it, keep some distance. Yeah, maybe hit the right side of the five. She left a little cut shot. Mm -hmm. Pretty tough to miss the seven ball, I think, because the table doesn't really grab much spin yet. Mm -hmm. Pretty focused. I feel like Dawn's a favorite to get on the six ball. She really, she does really well with cuts. It's not too much of a cut, like you said, but you do have to control. Oh, she played the other side of the six. I spoke too soon. I thought she was going to maybe spin around the seven quite tough. She played the short side and a little back and forth here. Both ladies still looking for that speed and the touch. Is she cutting this five and going maybe three rails up and down? Len your stroke out. I think that wow. that's a great shot. Oh, I would be unlucky if she gets straight. We see a replay. I think she has some angle there. It's a great shot. She has a small angle to work with. Maybe she can play a little top spin, top right spin. And travel in between the eight and the nine ball. Leave yourself a little longer seven, but just make sure you don't get too much angle. Mm -hmm. I think that would be nice. She's taking uh, some time here, though. and I'm not sure if she still has an extension. I think there might have been a little bit of a time clock situation that happened. He had to pause something. So, oh, they reset the clock. That's my fault. Oops. So let's see what she plays here. Looks like she's playing some inside. She really has got to avoid oh the she nine. She oh. really tried to go two rails, which I don't think it was possible. Mm -hmm. 
And from here, if Don can get quite straight on the seven, then at least the seven is not that tough and she can work towards a nice angle of 48. Although the eight ball on the side doesn't look too promising right now, I kind of like it to be able to keep it as simple as possible and um, have the angle to go up table for the nine. Not forcing anything, because she did get, I think she got fairly straight on this. Yeah, I ball. think I would have liked to be a little closer to that long rail, so I could stun over maybe towards the, the spot. Yeah. Um, but she might still be able to maybe play forward, go two rails, and then go into, into the natural zone to where the angle is nice, or at least where she can work with. Oh. It's just so hard to hit hit those balls the, um, at that speed with not a much angle to try to force it on these tables. It's gonna, it's gonna be difficult to pocket them. And I also feel the shot clock also made her a little nervous, of course. It's not easy when there's a zoomer going like meep, meep <laughs> in your ears, I guess. Do you have a lot of experience playing the shot clock? Um, recently I have, just with the um, the tour, the Pro Billiard Series. Um, but for the WPBA, it's typically the finals or the semifinals. So um, I have some experience, but every tournament's different as well. 10 seconds for some and five seconds for others, but I feel like I've adjusted pretty well to the shot clock here, just from my experience from Vegas. Do you have any advice for players that never get to experience it or that, are, that struggle with playing the shot clock? Um, I think it's mainly, I count in my head, I try to av avoid thinking about the actual sound itself. Of course, it's startling at the beginning, but once you get used to it, um, you just have to concentrate on staying down and counting it out in your head and making sure that you're not going to override the five seconds. But just keeping calm is the m main advice I would give somebody. Okay, a little conservative safety and especially the fact that she got close to that eight ball Bridging over the eight makes this seven ball a lot tougher. Oh, wow, she hit that shot. great. She Just is coming with a, gr a few great shots so far. Yeah, especially the very tough cut shots and jacked up all the time. They She's been executing very nicely. The bad thing about the last shot, I think it's just she might have gone a little far. So she can get really nicely on the nine. I think just get past the side like this. I think this is the best she could do. Yeah, it's a great shot also. But still some traveling. Maybe go three rails if possible. If she likes to play with inside, if she doesn't like, she mm -hmm. can play with outside and go two rails up and down. It's a little preference. I like inside usually on these kind of shots. Oh, she did put outsides on it just to go the two rail. Yeah, and now all the hard work is done by Kyoko, all the cut shots and long distance work to f in the end giving it to Dawn. But she kind of cheated the pocket a little bit and mm. lost the cue ball here. She actually looked like she, um, her footing actually came out under her when she was reaching for that shot. Uh, Still a favorite to make this if she plays this pocket speed. Mm. Nicely done. She takes a 2-1 lead. And we'll be back just after a short break to see who's going to win this set.
and we're back here at the Cambridge Red Deer Hotel in Alberta, Canada, where Don Hopkins is leading 2-1 to one in this qualifying match for the last 16 women players. With me here, Brittany Bryant, sharing her experiences. And I think this is a pretty unlucky kiss in the side. She mm -hmm. hit that pretty good, making the one. Making the one in the side the pocket. got straight kiss here. Poof. Quite unlucky. And a pretty nice layout to work with too for Kyoko Sone. Doesn't really want to overrun this. This one, she really needed a good speed on. If she can still draw this back a little bit and stay on the four, which she did. She did a good job. So, yeah, maybe get on the five. I would say that this key shot in this game. She'll just have to come above the above the ten, give her some angle. Play the six on the side after that. Yeah, used all of the pocket there. Yeah, it's really good speed here. Because if she gets too high, it's really tough to hold the cue ball for the, for the six in the side. So I think she did a good job and she feeling a little comfortable in the arena maybe. She's got a long bridge here. She does have to reach for it. See, table is changing a little bit compared to yesterday. The rails are giving a little bit more speed than they did yesterday. A little bit more speed than yesterday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time when you play topspin on shots, the bounce will be bigger as well. So like just now, she played a 5-0 with just a little bit topspin and then the reel always gives something to the cue ball. So a little traveling to do here. It's going to be over this 8-ball again. Calling her extension. It's all, all focus on this. Doesn't want to have the shot clock beeping. She needs to go three reels around. That's what I would do, go three mm -hmm. reels around the 8. She chose to have a long, difficult seven. This is going to be very difficult to control to stay on the eight. Yeah, she needs a real soft stroke on this. Just barely has to hit the rail and come out. Great shot. She did good. Very good. Perfect on it. Really good recovery shot here. And then it looks like Sony comes out of the break pretty nicely. She'll be tying it up here, 2 2. So, I'd like to go two rails here on the nine ball. So, I always get a Nice straight shot on the 10. If you just tell yourself, hey, I want to be on the second diamond on the long reel, you should be fine. Getting in that big, nice area. Like this. Perfect. Executing very clean. And then this 10 ball to go to each. No emotion there, just no. just business. <laughs> That's how she looks. And this format actually has changed since the last um, Pro Billiard Series event that we had. There'll be it's a winter break at this event, so it's a little bit of a momentum the change. The last WPBA was alternate. Alternate, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a little different. 
But I still think the format is quite fair to the players. Mm -hmm. Both players always have the opportunity. The one starts the first set, the other one starts the second one. And if you win the game, you get to break. If you don't, you suck. You know, that's <laughs> real fair. Yeah. <laughs> and then the shootout, of course. I mean, if you go hill hill and set and someone break and runs out on hill hill, you never got the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, if you play the shootout, you always have the opportunity. We had a couple discussions about that today. Pretty, pretty nice break, actually. Mm -hmm. Six ball came a little bit too high. And... Left Still broke dry though. Left a good opportunity on the one, with not a real tough layout here. The ball spread really nicely. She's just gonna stun over to the middle of the table to be have the two in the side pocket. She hit that pretty firm, lost the cue ball too, but she got pretty fortunate there. Mm -hmm. Covering the one ball, not just by one, but by two or three balls in between. Very tough to hit. Might be able to kick two or three rails. Just kick past the seven. Yeah, it's on right spin. I definitely like your idea of the three rails coming in behind it past the seven. If she can kick two rails and she hits the left side, there's a possible resave as well. I might, if I, yeah, I mean, it's tough to see from here. If she's kicking like this, the five might be in the way. She really has to play, so she just barely misses the five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. I was scared this would happen. And no, it forces her to have a 3-5 combo. I don't believe the three ball goes in clear. And I don't really think that five ball is in a great spot to mm -hmm. play the combination too. So Dawn has also two different options. She might opt to play for three fouls. Mm -hmm which the balls are pretty nice if she can freeze the cue ball on the six, eliminating some easy one railers. Putting the one ball by the nine would be nice, just to have an extra ball for the next potential safety. It's okay, would have been nice to really stick it to that six, but I think this is a minimum two rails. Obviously, the more rails you have to use, the harder it gets mm -hmm. for the people at home that Still watching to learn. And possibly she's I'm now kicking one rail with a lot of spin, but this is real tough to judge. She'll have to put extreme lefts on this to hit one rail. She could come in behind. Oh, she did. She Good did great. Shot. Great hit. She did leave an open shot for Dawn, but Dawn needs to start, um, you know, making some balls and feeling more comfortable herself. Well, I think this might be a good start if she can get straight on the two to position on the long rail for the carom, maybe on the five. Oh. Mm. Little. Aggravated, Don. Of course, nobody is going to smile after mm -mm. missing the one ball. I think she's going to be having a little talk with herself at this moment. Just try to regroup and next opportunity she has to really bear down and make sure that she's going to pocket these balls and not concentrate on potential shape maybe. Or too much or be in between two shots, just focusing 100%. Yeah, maybe less thinking. And Sone looking here for the carom. Still, the carom, it's not easy at all. Or does the three ball maybe pass the five? I don't think so. She did opt to play the, the combo, which she makes it a little difficult to, co to figure out where this three ball is going to end up with the 
angle she has to hit the five in. Yeah, I foresee a double kiss maybe. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Maybe if she stuns the cue ball out. Oh, no. if it doesn't oh, get it on the rail, up. but. She's is going to have to play a, a nice bank on this three ball. I think she's going to be aggressive for sure. Yeah, and I think it's also go time. If she looks a little bit at her opponent, she can have the feeling that she's playing a little better, a little bit more stable, I would mm -hmm. say. She made it. Nice shot. Nice recovery. She really needed to make this three ball. And good speed as well. Now if she can get nice and straight on this six. All the other balls are... Or does not have to be a tough situation. I think a little angle here is perfect. You didn't want to be on the left side of the six to potentially hit it into the 10. So I think she'll be happy with the leave here. Just play a natural angle up for the seven on the side. Yeah, might be able to just slow roll this to the side and move just mm -hmm. a little bit forward. Doesn't have to be straight. Just make sure you make the ball. Wouldn't really go for shooting to the side. She did, which I think it was more tough playing with the right spin mm -hmm. but she did a great job really good cue ball control and also the pocket speed of course she's in pure control here of the game and she's also going to remember the last uh, the last game there where she she ended up missing the nine and leaving it for a potential game for dawn and luckily got back to the table. Okay, nice angle. Would be nice to just play this one rail off the rail. Again, going straight towards the 10 ball. Slow down, oh. cue ball. Okay, she's still okay. Got a little close to her. And this stem ball to go on the hill. The first set. Oh. Mm -hmm. Got me worried a little bit <laughs> from that view. Banked it in a little. But. It went in there, and I feel that Kyoko Sone is having a little bit more rhythm going on than Dawn. Technique-wise, too. Mm -hmm. She's at least making sure the balls go in and yeah, getting at least yeah some decent shapes, mm -hmm. something to work with. Sometimes you just have to focus on uh, executing ball pocketing and letting the, the shape come naturally later on just to get in more of a rhythm and confidence level go up. So let's see. As much as I know about Dawn though, she's a definitely a fighter. So um, she's gonna have to, Kyoko's definitely gonna have to make sure she bears down on this game and finishes it off for two or a hill hill game. Dawn can definitely come back and steal this set from her. And another break from the center of the table. And another not so successful break. Not really working for her. Not yet, at least. Mm -hmm. And left a look on the one. Might be able to maybe cut the one and run into the three. For the two in the bottom left or in this view the top left corner pocket oh she hit that pretty firm and it would be nice if she went 
fast at nine ball, but she does not. And has a good chance in mm -hmm. kicking safe. I just don't like to hit the right side of the two. I would like to hit the left side, sending mm -hmm. the two towards the four, six, eight. Yeah, yeah. That would be my preference. I agree with that. I think trying to go for this shot is just too risky. It's probably going to leave an open shot for Kyoko. She was just in time, and this worked out. She kicked this with good speed, especially the speed is what I liked. And I believe she left it frozen, so... Yeah, that would make it even more tough. That means if it's frozen, that if she only hits the two ball in the face and mm -hmm. not a reel, it's a foul. So, makes it just a little hair more difficult. Definitely worth checking. You never know. But it also makes it a little bit more easy yeah. to maybe make it. And also a good result. Left some distance. I think here with the distance, I would just, um, just play the simple rail rail save. Just make sure that um, you get in between the 9 and the 10. Yeah, the minimum standard, if I look at the Euro Tour, is when they play these kind of saves. It's really, there has to Perfect. be a ball in between. And this is really good. That was a great shot. Very nice cue ball control. From that distance, it's not easy, especially when you don't feel comfortable quite yet. And I'm not sure if she can kick this one rail. She might have to kick this two rails. She did look at hitting the short, the short rail on the right. Now she's looking at your two rail that you suggested. Wh which would be a favorable situation if she can hit the two ball pretty thick. There's a lot of balls to get behind mm -hmm. with that four, six, eight. But she needs to hit the two ball first. Good safety shot from Don Hopkins, resulting in ball in hand here. And also opening the eight, the, the pocket where the eight was at for the four ball. So now it's a wide open table. We talked a lot about the ball in hands. A lot of players play a lot of draw shots and crazy stuff on the ball in hands. I usually look for more just forward easy shot. Less movement. Yeah, and it's more controllable speed-wise. I think you and Don are on the same page. She's just going to slowly pocket this in the side. Yeah, she wants to be straight up. or maybe just a little angle. She is going to be jacked up over the five, but she's going to be perfectly fine because it's pretty much a straight and shot and easy shape on the four. Yeah, and then she might be able to stun over for the five in the top middle pocket. Depends if she can get quite straight on the four, she can also play the five and the other. John's going to come up and watch the seven, though. Her shirt is quite close. Extension called. An additional 30 seconds to the clock. And we are playing an all bell foul tournament. So let's see what she's going for here. I think she can still draw yeah, past the side pocket and shoot the five in the lower center pocket. That would be ideal. Oh, she very nice. And great stroke. Also very important to get off that long rail. If she was stuck on the rail, would make things so much more difficult. So now she can start building up to that seven ball to make the big big travel to the eight. Mm -hmm. She got a little straight on the six ball to be able to create an angle for the seven to come the 
come the three rails down for the eight. She might be able to hit the top. Oh. Well, oh, she'll be able to stun if over. If she stuns a little bit over, she doesn't really have to do much. If she can go half a diamond lower, that should be enough angle to work with, like this. See there, I like getting a little bit closer to the rail. That's just a preference for myself to have more of a natural angle to come around for the eight. Now she's got to do a little bit of work here. Yeah, it was just for her a little tough, being so straight on the six. Still has enough angle to go. Three rails. Ooh, needs to go. Almost. And it's cuttable. I think you gotta go here. Mm -hmm. If you play this with just top spin, there's no way you're going to hit the 10 and you can go up and down. Take on the longer nine ball. She's usually very successful with these cuts, so I, I feel like she's a favorite to make this and come up and down. There we are. Nice shot, Don. Oh, little, little firm though. We got another tester. Let's see how Don Hopkins is feeling in this first set. She hasn't been feeling too great, but now she's coming up with some pretty good shots. Mm -hmm. And she cannot afford another mistake here. Nice it's a shot. Great shot, and also look at the speed. It's perfect. What Actually, a big shot to go 3-3 three, three to tie it up. Especially being under the gun. Mm -hmm. This 10 ball to go hill hill in the first set. Nice shot. So, pretty tight match here. Both players coming with big shots. Some good saves here and there. It's nice to see them finally feeling a little bit more comfortable. I know uh, the kick shots have been a little bit more difficult with the multiple rails, but um, at least they're they're starting to get into a rhythm. So the top 16 of this tournament is a random draw? The A side will be placed um, where the position in the brackets are now, and then the B side will be randomly drawn into the A side. So it's winners versus the losers. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And do you have any player in this tournament where you say, well, I'd rather not play her um, as soon as possible, maybe <laughs> later? <laughs> there are some, but uh, that's fine by me if I draw them. I'm going to draw them no matter what in this tournament, next tournament, so. Yeah. It's pretty hard to avoid people in pool. And. There was an upset um, in my mind. Uh, Allison's on the A or on the B side, should I say. So she'll be going and drawn into the A side. Which okay. would get some pretty fiery matches, maybe. You never know. There might be a early Fisher. Fisher, for, Fisher, yeah. or that would be, be exciting. A, could be a lot of interesting matches because she's on the loser side. So, dry break by Don had two balls going to the side pocket, but both just stayed there. And Sone lost the cue ball a little bit. Is she going to play this aggressive in the top left and try to just nudge the nine? Or does she have that angle? Or she may be shooting this in the top left and stunning in between the nine and the seven to come off the rail and mm -hmm. back out. Very. If she's able to do that, I love that shot. But it's much better not to hit any other balls. It's a small gap though. You don't don't want to hit that nine ball. She's, I think she's playing with top spin here, so she might be going for the two rails. Ooh. Mm. I like the idea of maybe running into the nine softly to guarantee a shot on the three, but I think she was so focused on doing that that she mm -hmm. lost her eye on the 
making the two. And in the game of pool, we like to make the balls. <laughs> it would be useful. And an unexpected miss on this two, as there was a natural position on the three. And you can, you can feel the pressure coming up a little mm -hmm. bit here and there because they both know how important winning the first set is. Oh. They're both so close. Just guaranteeing yourself to do a possible shootout and winning the first set is extremely important. And even better to being able to close it out instead of going into the shootout. <laughs> Still some work here. She cuts it in the top left corner. She's running into the 10, which could bring difficulties. And if she shoots in the top right, which she's looking for, I think. No, she's going for the top left. She went for the other corner. There was no kissing balls. But the shot is a little harder. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, just couldn't avoid the 10, and I think she was thinking about that more or less than pocking the ball. And is there a 5-10 combination now? Where did she move that 10 ball? Oh, you're right. That would be quite unfortunate to push it wow. perfectly in that nice spot. Yeah, she's, um, she's going to be able to pocket this ball and just go to the, the two rails. Yeah, I think the 5 10 the combo. combination is a pretty good option here. Oh, she played this pretty firm. Oh, no. Wow. Oh, and she for sure not once. Oh, wow. no. It's a little bit of outsides that she put on the ball to allow it to go that direction. And she hit that pretty firm as well. Probably so focused on just making the four. Mm -hmm. And here, the 5 10 combination for an early win to claim the first, first set. set. For Kyoko Sony. And what a fight this has been, this first set. And we'll be right back after a short break with the next set.
And we're back from the Cambridge Red Deer Hotel here in Alberta, Canada, where we're going to start soon with the second set. Don Hopkins scratching on Hill Hill, leaving Kyoko Sone with a heartbreaking 5-10 combination. So she's up 1-0 in sets. And as Kyoko Sone started the first set, it's fair to have Don Hopkins starting the second one. See if Don will be able to pocket the one ball on the side and have a shot. Ooh, she overcut that one a little bit on the other side, on the left side. That's why not that many balls spread that nice. It's very important to hit the one at least square. You don't really have to put a lot of power in as long as you hit it square. That's the most effective way. And some work to do here. The two ball doesn't really go in the down left or in the side pocket. She might be able to play for the two, three combination. Ooh. Unfortunately, I just think that was caused by um, uh, the long queuing action that she had on that shot. She was really reaching for it and just gave a little too much energy towards it and was drew it back. And I was wondering at first, maybe she could have played the 2-10 uh, carom. Mm -hmm. But she, she might still be able to call this, or maybe the 3. She's going to play a little Massé around the 7. Not sure if she called something. At least she hit the 2 ball. But I foresee her being glued to mm -hmm. that 3. See a little Massé. Although she doesn't have an open pocket, this um, position isn't too bad. I'm pretty happy when positions like this come up and um, you're able to play a very easy safety. Just maybe come off the rail a little bit. She's going for this. With the beep on the background. And she probably played it a little two way, but of course this is very easy to hit at least the two ball mm -hmm. and she might be even possible to kick this to the short rail and then behind the eight mm -hmm. so there's some moves draw the cue ball behind the three she is going to call it just in case she does hit it a little bit too thick so let's see if she places with a little low left she might be able to get the cue ball just glued to that three Oh, she go. Ooh. And yeah, she really tried to put that mm -hmm. opposite side safety going on. And she brought the six ball in play as well. And that might be very useful for Don. can see her talking to herself through that one. So let's see, there's still two other matches playing. We got Amalia Matas from Spain playing against your previous opponent, Naomi Williams. And then on the other side, we have Taruko, who just lost early on the TV table, mm -hmm. playing against a woman from Australia. I think her name was Dean, not too sure. Unfortunately, I'm not familiar with her Be at all. Bean Hung, that's Bean what I said. Bean Hung, okay. Flew all the way from Australia to be here. Wow. I did not know that. And I was quite impressed. I never seen her before and she does play pretty well. 
I'll have to keep an eye open. I haven't seen her play yet. And she is playing my roommate. So I will be a little biased on that one. I'm going to be rooting for Taruko Kukaleli on that. Also another, um, all these matches are win or go home. Qualifying the uh, winners to go on to the final 16 single elimination stage. And then there was one more, which I didn't know was going on, is Jody Jankowski against Caroline Pau. Caroline leading 2 nothing. Turuko lost the first set 4-0. And mm. is now down 3-0, so things are not looking too well for her. And Amalia Matas is also looking forward to a pretty comfortable win. She's up 1-0 in sets and 3-0 up in the second one. Yeah, and she also has a pretty wide open table over there to our left, so she might be able to close that out against Naomi, unfortunately, for Canada's own. So I think this match we have here is the tightest match of them four. Maybe Caroline Pau and Jody Jankowski, but they just... They're just in the third rack of the first set. And let's go back. What's happening here? A little back and forth I've seen. Both players missed a couple balls through the side pockets as well. Mm -hmm. And did she call that? No, she did no. not. And now... Don has a pretty good angle to work with going to the five. She cannot wait to get that first game on the board in the second set. Do you try going underneath the 10 here, Tim? Or you just float it across and play the sharp? I think I will just play top right and just go in between the 10 and the 7-6. Pretty sure she wasn't trying to do that. Just try to float to the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. Take the sharper, sharper um, cut on the five. Yeah. Just because the table, it doesn't grab that much yet. And I think Dawn was trying to go in between and that's how she bumped the 10 ball. But she played a similar shot like this before and look at this mm -hmm. for a safety shot. That's Great cue ball control, eliminating both left and right side. One real kick. Mm -hmm. This is another one I think that you're right on the three rails. That's what I would be doing. I think just coming up on the left side of the um, Five ball and coming in behind it if it's possible. Oh, that might be a great option, and then call the five in the side pocket. Mm -hmm. If a big pocket, and if you miss it, there's a good chance. Kicking the five towards the four balls in that direction. And I think she's looking at doing this. Yeah, she's coming a little wide, so she might be she looking might just at the two rail. I think the two rail is quite difficult with that side pocket there. Well, it's a well-deserved ball in hand, to be honest. Dawn executed that last safety shot very well. Yeah, her running game has been not that strong until now, but her safety play has been making sure she's hanging in there. Mm -hmm. And heart, of course, no give up. Oh, she didn't really want to go that far. Of course, she can still choose to shoot it to the corner, but I think she would have liked to be nice and straight to the side. But why play the easy way if oh, you can take the hard not. route, right? <laughs> We all know the challenges with that. <laughs> so, she's 
tapping the table a little bit. She's not satisfied by the way it's going. She might be able to just stop the cue ball and shoot the seven in the top left mm -hmm. corner. No, oh, she did Ooh. choose to bump it. And this is quite a risk she took. Not sure if, yeah, if it was necessary to bump balls, if you can still make the ball in a different way and don't bump balls. Mm -hmm. It may have panned out if she hit it just a little bit softer and just like eliminated so much distance, but here she's being aggressive and made, almost made the bank, but left the cue ball in the back rail, so. Yeah, I think she played it a little two way because the eight is in a pretty favorable spot, even though she was from far away. And I think Kyoko is looking to cut the seven which I think is a pretty tough shot. I might go for the cue ball behind the eight and the seven close to the nine ball. Mm -hmm. Or the other way around, okay. Just needs to get that ball in between. I think she's left the bank and this one does look pretty promising. No, she did not. And <laughs> I <laughs> a think little chuckle there. She's like, God bless you, too. One of the cameramen that had a <laughs> sneeze attack. <laughs> exactly. But I think, and this is very unfortunate because, yeah, there was such a big area to get behind with the 9 and the 10. Mm -hmm. But I think she left the gap straight in between. Yeah, Kyoko should be able to take this game and oh. <gasps> oh, commentator's curse. She jumped up a little bit there. But she can't complain about the outcome. No, back and forth first game here in this set. The break might not have done them real well. Oh. oh. A little Great straight shot. back here. Wow. And we got a replay. Also giving her a very nice angle to work with on this eight. I think she can go forward, two rails. Mm -hmm. Possibly three rails. I do like bringing out the stroke here because there's no harm in hitting it too hard. Oh, she hit this great. Perfect. She can get straight on this nine. And the 10 ball in the side to draw early blood. Still thinking though. Looked pretty she looks simple like she's to gonna us. Go forward one. Yeah, I wouldn't really want to travel more than mm -hmm. just stun over a little bit and. That side pocket. Oh, she's okay. She's got a shot. She did make this a little bit more difficult, just being on the rail. But I think that's just getting into your own head. It's the second set. She did lose the first set. Um, she really wants this first game. Yeah, a little surprised to see her play this positional shot. But it doesn't matter. She recovered. She's up one nothing. And now it's time to get loose for Don Hopkins if she wants to stay alive. Oh, there's our Predator team over there. Yeah, ready to check out the tables after mm -hmm. the matches are finished. Just to make sure everything is well for the players. Always looking so happy, Mr. Kareem Belhaj from <laughs> Predator. And in the back, like you can see all the amateurs still playing their tournaments. Mm -hmm. Which is a great addition for all the players here, I think. 
really f a lot of fun to have them around. And it's such, a, it's such a treat to have this event here. Like I've said before, there's not many of these have, that have come over to Canada and um, amateurs having the opportunity to see a lot of great players, um, especially the women. The women don't come up here very often, so I've spoken to a lot of them and they're extremely excited to have us here. I believe it'll be a little bit more uh, volume tomorrow. The team event, I think, starts off tomorrow, so. So, yeah. Everyone's getting a good night rest tonight. It's a little bit more quiet within the, within the venue right now. Yeah, and then, of course, with the last 16, we'll have a bunch of spectators, I guess. And I believe, if I, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think uh, 10 a.m. matches tomorrow, I believe. I don't know who would be um, within that match, but I think it would be at 10, noon, 2, and 4, maybe uh, an hour or two within. Yeah, so I do, I have heard that um, they will be playing only two tables. Perfect. So Everyone will be streamed. two matches each. Every match will be streamed, either on YouTube, World Burrier TV, or Kazoom for this table. And the other one on Q Sports Live, mm -hmm. which is a great opportunity, of course. Every player does deserve to be seen. Mm -hmm. She did avoid it, but certainly came close. Yeah, and she really liked to hit that six and not mm -hmm. just the six and the five to get that safety in there. I do like just playing this simple and rolling the one to the rail, maybe getting in behind the six, even if you hit a little uh, firm, you can hit the five on the back end from the rail, but just make sure that cue ball gets. Yeah, I was thinking maybe playing the one towards the short rail and then mm -hmm. get behind the eight, but I think she was trying to do the same thing, but she didn't really take it up much of the object ball. I think the object ball always goes first. Mm -hmm. but you cannot always rely on sticking the cue ball because you're not just always going to do it. And then if you have the one ball and the rail, you got some backup. Always a plan B. And this is a nice little bump here on the two. Curious to see if that four ball goes. I think it goes, which would be a very good opportunity. She can maybe stun up, get straight on the four to the top left corner pocket. Just be very accurate here being over this five ball. Expect her to not leave too much angle on the five. Possibly get as straight as possible just to shoot the six in the top right corner pocket, as we can see here. And now it's the top left. Oh. oh. Very unexpected miss here by Don Hopkins. And getting away with it just a little bit. But I don't believe she has any any of sight on this ball at all, not even a sliver, so she'll have to be kicking one rail at it. Definitely be calling this ball. Well, she did make contact. And She's not going to be happy with that, but she made contact. Yeah, the cue ball did slide just in between that six and the eight. She gets a little bit full. It would have been perfect to her. Oh, and they're going a little back and forth here. Both players probably getting tired. They've been playing for 
like an hour now, an hour and a half. So, of course, the pro players start to struggle and they get tired and mm -hmm. it's a big grind. But also this is part of being a pool player. And I'm sure you've talked a lot about just some um, time zones and uh, adapting to any jet lag that you have. I know Kyoko um, came a fair distance to this tournament. Don is from the East Coast as well, so. Yeah, but on the other side, I have a feeling uh, Kyoko came here quite early. Oh, okay. They, uh, I, I actually know that uh, Noyuki Oi he usually travels pretty early as well, mm -hmm. just to get a little comfortable at the spot where he's at. And I've had to travel to the US a couple times and I did not feel too great just by showing up one day before and then having to go. Yeah, that definitely with their experience with traveling, they'll know what they need well to adjust to the conditions. It's a long trip as well, so mm -hmm. it's just tiring and then jet lag eventually. So looking for the gap between the 10 and the 8. But she overcut the ball and oh, she might lock up this cue ball. I don't think she can hit that 5 or there must be a gap between the 6 and the 8 she can find. Mm -hmm. She called. Can she see it? I'm not From sure. Her angle, I'm no, I oh think she's, she's checking the hand. rails. Which, if she makes a five, there's a incredible big chance to have a nice angle on the six. Mm -hmm. So uh, nice speed. Stay oh down. She hit that pretty firm. Surprised to see her playing this speed and probably the shot clock that got her all fired up. Mm -hmm. So well, I feel like there's been um, multiple situations like this where she's been kicking at the ball and Don's got a little bit fortunate after a miss. Frustration does um, come into play when it happens multiple times. Yeah, and it's very easy to say, oh, don't get frustrated, but we all do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just <laughs> part of the nature. But the best thing you can do is just look at the things you can actually change by yourself and not just the things that somebody else does. Think of the positive. You're back at the table, right? You're back at the table <laughs> and besides that, you can only change whatever you do, not what other people do. Absolutely. Oh, she got straight. That's perfect. She has to roll up. She is going to be on the short side, though the seven if she's straight on the six yeah could could have worked with a little angle to go towards the rail and out but this is a little speed tester let's see if she got the speed going on and took her eye of the shot mm -hmm. got perfect on the seven Thinking maybe a possible 6-9 combination. Mm -hmm. She goes for this automatic position on the 6 as it travels with the cue ball towards the short rail. But it's a long distance and it's not straight. She still has to really make this happen. Yeah, you can just see the frustration the last few shots with Kyoko. Yeah, and for Dawn, she's staying quite calm. They're just both fighting so hard to just stay in the in the moment mm -hmm. 
It's also a very important round. The winner of this match does get in the prize money to at least be able to cover some traveling expenses. The other player can go back home. Ooh, and she got pretty fortunate having two bumps here, guaranteeing at least a shot on the seven. She pl can play two rails, playing outside, right spin. For the eight in the side pocket. Oh, just get a little bit straight. Yeah, mini angle. So kind of take what the table gives you here and um, stun it over. I don't think she has that much of an angle to be even to able to do that. To be honest, pretty tough. I wouldn't really like to. You're just rolling it up and taking the. Well, there's only one shot if you want to get nice on the 9 one. That's playing top spin, going two mm -hmm. rails forward. Two rails forward. That's a shot I actually really like to play. Um, the other thing she might be able to do is draw the cue ball for the short side of the 9 ball. Mm -hmm. Because I don't really think that even though she might be able to stun over one ball, the cut shot is still pretty, pretty steep. Oh, she did a pretty she good executed job. executed that great. Well, maybe it's just me being scared of these side pockets, but I've seen a lot of balls being missed on mm -hmm. those. So now she can opt to just make the nine with a little left spin and go two rails and shoot the ten ball in the top right corner. She can also try to do a little bit more. But this is real speed sensitive. Mm -hmm. She did a good job and looking to tie the score one each. And it wouldn't surprise me if we have a possible shootout here because both ladies are fighting really hard, not ready to give up. So it looks like some, a couple matches have qualified now. I believe Amalia yeah, qualified. Um, Amalia Matas, she won in quite easy fashion. The only match still playing is Jody Jankowski against Caroline Pau. Caroline won the first set 4-0. We're reaching a very interesting stage of the tournament as we're close to having the draw. And from here, it's almost like I know almost all players. <laughs> and that's, I mean, yeah. it's, that's pretty good for the first time doing a w WPBA event. Again, her her break wasn't successful coming from the center, but not leaving a big opportunity here. She might be able to play a stop shot, shooting the one into the six and getting mm -hmm. the cue ball stuck with the five. But it's a sensitive shot, though. She might also be able to get the cue ball behind the four. Does not want to leave the real first, and this real first might be on. I think this looks pretty promising. If she can get that cue ball going two rails out of there and not bump the nine. Even going uh, straight tops, I feel like she might even get in behind the five, to be honest. Perfect. She didn't but get in behind the five. Pretty good call. 
And this two ball, I think it goes, but it's a real tight pocket. Mm -hmm. She did call something, so she might also be going for the three ball, but I think not. This is a really small pocket. Have Can to hit it at a certain speed here and possibly use a rail. Really great stop shot there. If she hit that any harder, I think the pocket would spit it out. She may have to use the right care too. Yeah, haven't really seen a lot of bridge shots yet. Little unexpected miss. Tried to get as straight as she could on that four ball. And let's see if Don can turn this game around. Maybe play a good safety here. She might have left just the edge of it on the left. Which could get her in trouble. Mm -hmm. She'll just bring, so I'll just bring the three around the eight, position maybe the cue ball the same spot. Well, she did end up hitting it a little thick. But still not a gimme. Choose to cut the three and maybe go bump into the six, but it's very tough. She might also be able to just play the safety, playing it two rails behind the ten, the seven, and get the cue ball close to the six. This cue ball. It's going to come out a little bit, but. She called top right corner pocket, so it means she's kicking. And I think if she plays this with top spin, top spin maybe a little bit running. Side English, she can stick the cue ball nicely there with the three ball leaving. And oh, Aww. this is so unfortunate. How, how does it stay there? Wow. Look at this. Oh, that's so. Wow. Hit the points four, four times, times to stay there. Wow. Need a little bump here. Mm -hmm. Oh, and she got it. Mm -hmm. And I think that three ball could have gotten her in trouble. But now she can start to build up nicely. I do just r like going a little forward with this, maybe even going past the side, giving yourself some angle on the five instead of punching it and trying to get off the rail. She is going to be over the six again. She's calling the extension here. Needs a little bit more time. I do like to stun this ball off the rail. If you can get straight and just a little bit off the rail. But she decided to go forward. Bad call. Just not enough though, because now she's just slightly off center. You know, it's not straight, but... Yeah, she would have liked to go naturally towards its, that short rail and come back out. But she's still forcing it. But she said, well... I'll just leave myself a little bit more angle so I can go two rails to the seven. There might be a possible seven ten combination. She checked it, but don't think she's really tempted. It's not straight on there. She will start thinking about it when she does not get on the seven. Or if she does not get on the seven. Looks like a good speed. Yeah, and she really needs to get on the left side. 
think she just got the wrong angle. Here we got Elul Kibaroglu, the last Euro Tour winner in Bulgaria, together with Sara Rocha from Portugal. And this is a pretty nice stroke, actually. It's not easy to draw this back out. And now she can just softly spin this, some left spin, play pocket speed and go two wheels to the center of the table. That would be very nice, nice pocket speed. Doesn't want to go too far. She's been having a little trouble mm -hmm. playing the speed. I think a little bit more than Sone. Yeah, I think she Sony's been able to adapt a little bit quicker, but she's just going to play this one rail and out and hopefully get on the good side. Oh, she oh. overhit it. Just was stretching there. I feel like that's happening a lot throughout she's, this set. She still got the, this ten ball, but with the cue ball on the rail, it's a very nervy shot as well. Including that just being on the rail is quite awkward in general. Stemble to take another lead. Be nice and still. Oh. And a little gift. A little gift for Kyoko Sone here. Stealing this game as Don Hopkins did all the hard work. Mm -hmm. Going up 2-1 in the second set, potentially closing out the, the match if she wins this set. And we'll be back for the rest of this set after a short break. And we're back in this very tense qualification match for the last 16. Here we see the Predator Arcos two balls wrecked by referee John Lehman, well-known referee, our regular customer for the Pro Billiard Series. Always nice to have him. And Yoko Sone breaking from exactly the center of the table, or exactly the center of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Table would be weird. 
Oh, oh she got fortunate and didn't get Maybe the seven. going the side. Yeah, she's lost the cue ball a little bit there. But not a nice opening shot for Dawn. She'll just play a nice, easy safety. What do you like for safety here? What I do is just push the uh, one ball above the three, get it in behind the 10 and the nine, and the cue ball float maybe, hopefully, behind the five and the four. Yeah, she I think she played a good them. shot. Good shot. Nice call. In that sense, you have two options. You can, like she was able to do, get behind the four or the five, and then if you don't get there, then you have the one ball behind the nine or the ten. So. Yeah, she had a big area to get behind, and she did well. And the only thing Sony hasn't really adapted to yet is kicking the balls in general. She hit this one, and this oh, <laughs> just great. when I said this, she <laughs> had a great result. She yeah, hit the really good side of that one. Yeah, that's much more than that. And this is a pretty good trap, too. She might have to just kick past at six and play with draw. Mm -hmm. Pretty much speed to make it real short. She can also choose to kick from the top side of the table with some right spin to go mm -hmm. real first. It's tough. Yeah. Great re-safe kick shot from Kyoko. She does have the window in between the three and the nine to get position on the two. Just come out a little bit, stun the one ball, play a little draw shot on the oh. two ball to get on the three. Oh. Just two or three balls would be okay, but it worked out. The little bump is okay. Now it's important not to leave herself too much angle on the three. Mm -hmm. I would just, you know, just where I can get comfor uh, comfortable stroke, get off the rail, and that's it. Don't really want to go up and down all the time and a lot of spin and kiss. Keep it simple. She is going to be shooting over the eight again. Yeah, I would have liked to be a couple balls more to the right. Well, when she's executed this one, she'll be able to get on the four, and then the tough shot would be position on the six after the five. Pretty mm. sensitive shot as well. And that's what I meant. If she would just get a little bit more straight on the three, it would make her life so much easier. And here she can spin the cue ball maybe a little outside to get back to the center of the table. Avoiding the eight would be nice. Oh. Yeah, and Don Hopkins not in the great spot right now. Looking not too solid anymore. She started off pretty solid in the first set where she lost 4 3. A little unfortunate, and now it's almost all Sone. Oh, she got past the 8. Yeah, can choose to stun the cue ball over to the long rail to shoot the five in the top left corner and play two rails down table for the six. I think this is key shot. She can get a nice angle on the five. It would be highly appreciated. She decided to put a lot of sp speed in there and again, is she close to that eight? Mm -hmm. I think she is, or at least if she's playing with right spin. 
And yeah, I think she did a little bit too much on that four. She could have played, just keep it a little short and simple. Might oh, be she just be okay. okay here. But she's Queuing close it. to the eight. Oh, little fortunate bump, and yeah, she's caught a nice bump there. She did a little, a little uh, raised her hand a little bit to Dawn. I don't think she was meaning to be on that side of it. And now she can get to the center of the table, or at least a little high on the seven. Just a little top spin with... Oh! That's very... Very unexpected. I think I would have liked to play just one rail. Mm -hmm. Keeping it simple at this point is probably... Yeah, don't play with all the spin and all the angles and just makes it so much, so much more difficult, especially when their energy level is so low. You need so much more concentration on, yeah. The small details, like I want to be down the rail, I want to put this much spin, I need to be exactly there. Mm -hmm. So, But again, we have to oh. mention the pressure within this match. Yeah, there's a lot of s at stake here. And I think Dawn was trying to just draw back a little bit. And she was just going to take the tough cut shot on the 7. Mm -hmm. But this one is... I would say almost nobody would shoot this shot. Mm. Just play the simple rail to rail, to rail safe and just guarantee that you'll be back at the table in my eyes. Well, she went for the bank and would have been nice for her if she missed it on the long rail to maybe still get it behind the 10 and the 9. Mm -hmm. Now she's left the shot, but it's not an easy one with the cue ball stuck on the rail. But she is going for this. I'm pretty sure about that. I do like hitting this firm and actually going around the table. Possibly playing uh, the eight in the side and coming with three rails. Yeah, very she nice. I also like playing for the eight in the side or maybe in the top corner pocket. I don't know how she exactly ended up. Looks like she can make this in the down bottom left corner pocket. Oh, this is going to drop oh, and oh, that's good speed. Yeah. She got nervous there too when she hit it, but just the ball. It, the only reason it dropped is because she played it that soft. And here, she can stun over the cue ball a little bit. Don Hopkins will be in a pretty bad spot. She'll be securing a 3-1 lead within the second set. And there it goes. 3-1 for Kyoko Sone. And Don Hopkins is in trouble. Following this result, I believe, or the Caroline Powell match over there, they'll be doing the draw to see the um, qualification round matches with the B side um, drawing into the A side for tomorrow's first round match at 10 a.m. Yeah, Caroline Powell being up 2 0 in the second set, looking quite comfortable.
looks like Don's just looking to push over by the top left pocket, allowing Kyoko to possibly play a safe. Yes, but in this case, I don't mind like going for the bank here. Yeah, in this case, there is a big reward if she mm -hmm. can just make the one and get the two to the side. I thought she may have left it a little bit closer to the left hand pocket to allow no bank, but. At this point, she's up 3 1. I think going for the aggressive shot is the way to go, and um, there's definitely an open table for her to run out. Oh, oh just barely. But still pretty fortunate because this is, I mean, I think I'm pretty sure I can call this the worst spot to be on the pool table. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> Nobody wants to be in this situation. the extension that is needs one a little thing bit more time I haven't seen much in this match is the extension called there hasn't been too many maybe the five seconds but not resulting in the extensions too often she might be able to hit the left side of the one running into the eight with left spin and just trying to get the cue ball as far as she can maybe get behind the ten but she decided to just mm -hmm. slow go on there this must mean the one wasn't froze to the rail, but there is a chance that Don Hopkins will be behind the 10 here. Oh, she only focused on the one. She could have had a nice cue ball behind the 10 as well to really lock Don up. John's but John's going to be taking a look to see if it's frozen or not. And if it's froze, it would make this very difficult because it's tough to hit a rail also with that side pocket point there. It must not be frozen with the speed that she chose to hit it at. Oh, and Good that's shot. very nicely hit. Very nice hit there by Don Hopkins. Feathering that one ball. And tough to really get the cue ball out of there too with that side pocket being there. There is a scratch. She might be able to hit it a little thick and banking the one over to the 4-3 but just hitting it softly, double kissing it there. Doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And this might take a while because they might be doing this for <laughs> a couple <laughs> times <laughs> coming. a little bit of distance between the eight and the one now so she might choose to play a different safe I think there's a nice opportunity with with this four three two this little corner where the cue ball is right now so if you can maybe bank the one ball towards the left short rail she played it the other way around trying to get behind the 10, 10 yeah. And did it she out. leave a little thin contact on that one? If not, this will put some pressure on Don. This is a real thin hit. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure if I would try to hit this. Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like she feels confident that she can hit it. And leave, um, she, she was able to hit it much thicker than I thought. Yeah, it looked it really very thin. deceiving. <laughs> but not managed to make the one. And this one ball to the corner is also not a guaranteed opening shot. 
I do like just playing the one up and down and playing the cue ball in behind the nine. I'm not sure if the cue ball, if you can hold it there. She can maybe also just overcut, leaving the one with the nine. I'm not sure if she can hold the cue ball mm. there. But at least distance, that's what I've been doing a bunch of times. And this one ball probably goes, but she has to be so precise and she has to play the right speed as well, mm -hmm. or it won't go. I think she played this mm. two way. Mm -hmm. That's a very clever shot. Playing this two way, always having a guaranteed shot on the two. And the one is in a pretty tough spot too. I don't think she can kick using the short rail. Maybe two rails using the long rail and the short rail. If you're going two rails here, do you like hitting it firm and trying to bring the cue ball? Po it's going to hit the seven, but possibly just, just up get table. it out there. Yeah, because if you hit it soft, mm -hmm. there's not much that could happen. This is a great opportunity for Dawn. For her to make it 3-2, it might put a little bit more pressure on Kyoko um, to end the set off. So hopefully she made a nice run here and stay focused. Oh, oh no. She was oh too no. slow. Did she not have her extension? I think she's not paying that much attention anymore. That's unfortunate. these seven balls to seal the deal and survive day two here at the Predator Canada Women's Open. Very interesting to see what she's going to play on the seven going to the eight. Still some traveling of course, the five and the six close to each, so to each other, so they, yeah, she can really position herself nicely. Um. This is okay, but this is one of the key shots. I do like coming close to this, uh, the left, or the right rail, sorry, closer to the seven. Instead of going two rails, maybe just slow roll this. Because then she'll be reaching on the seven. Oh, that'll work out. Yeah, she decided to put a little spin on there so she could reach. Even though she's wearing heels, she's not the tallest player in the field. N not a lot of players wearing heels nowadays. I'm definitely a flat girl. The flats work for me. I don't yeah. know how they do it. I'll be honest with you, Tim. I don't know how they do it all day. <laughs> well, it's also, <laughs> if you look at the men's, usually they also have a small heel. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, there's also a lot of men players playing with sneakers, with mm -hmm. just the black ones, because they walk all day. Yeah, I comfort, mean, right? Just comfort, yeah.
these two balls. She's got a nice angle on the nine ball to just follow up two rails to the other side of the ten. Good yeah. stroke. Perfect speed too, and I think it's pretty fair to say that this is close to being over. Kyoko Sone here, this 10 ball for the win, qualified for the last 16. And thank you here for being with me. Oh, Brittany. thank you for having me. It was great to be here and um, be able to commentate. And I'm looking forward to the future matches and playing tomorrow. Yeah, good luck for tomorrow. Thank you very and, much. Uh, yeah, this will be all for today, but we'll be back at 10 a.m. Mountain Time tomorrow. So please join us again. My name is Tim de Ruiter, and thank you for watching. Good night. Good night, everyone.